Hello guys, hello everyone. Welcome to the session of AAML. It's gonna be an end-to-end -end session, and it's gonna be a year-long session. So, so this session we're gonna learn everything that you guys are required in order to become a successful data scientist. Okay, so please subscribe to our channel if you guys have not subscribed because it's gonna be a year-long program, and you're gonna learn everything that you required for data science. Okay, so yeah, before coming to the session, as we are always mentioning, please, please make sure that you guys have uh, watched all the previous video uh, clearly, and so that we can have a better understanding of what we are saying today. Okay, so without wasting any time, we just jump into today's session. Actually, we are just exploring in the previous session, like uh, what are the data science tools and technologies that we are having in order to work on the data. Okay, so we have discussed about different things like Python or, and then uh, finally we have seen about some databases like those things. Today, it's a continuation of it. Today, we're gonna see Tableau and data visualization. Okay, so guys, um, for data visualization, we are having number of tools like Tableau, Power BI, like those things. Which makes the things very easier when we doesn't need to have any programming language for it. Tableau is like um, you just need to load the data set. There is something called as uh, pre processing step, which is available inside the Tableau software itself. You can do that and you can just drag and drop everything, guys, and it will create a great, like a wow kind of uh, visualizations. Okay. I, I'm not exaggerating, but it will create, okay. Uh, it will create the visualization which is far, far, far better than uh, Seaborn that we have seen. Okay. Um, it will be very interactive. Those things we can see in the C bond. We can we can do in the C bond, but like it's gonna take so much of code. Okay. But here we just need to drag drop. Okay. Just what are the values, what are the names that we need, and then what graph we need. That's it. Just a drag drop. Okay. So interactive dashboards. Tableau allows you to create an interactive dashboard that's still compiling data stories. That's that's very important, right? So we will be telling uh, we need to create a story kind of thing whenever we need to discuss with the client. Okay. So in order to create a very compelling story, we need Tableau. Tableau kind of softwares which creates the data visualization for us and it will create a report itself. Okay. We doesn't need to create a visualization and we need to create a report. No. Everything will be available in Tableau. Tableau as a dashboard kind of thing. Dashboard is a simple thing. Like whenever we create a number of visualizations in the same page, then it is called as a dashboard. And there will be a filters kind of thing, and we can adjust and we can do everything. Okay. So it creates an interactive dashboards. Okay. For the user. So that um, as we are mentioning in the previous session, right? Kind of a filter. Okay. We just throw all the data set to the visualization and just we can filter it. Okay. By using the interfaces that we are having. Okay. Next, data exploration. Tableau provides tools for data exploration with uh, uncovering patterns and creating visualizations okay tableau is like it's also one of the data visualization technique i'm just explaining right so we will be whenever we are having data we need to have a better understanding of what the data is so that way we can able to find what kind of analysis we can do okay uh, consider if we are having a numerical data and we are applying categorical uh, analysis onto it then there is no point right similarly vice versa like if you are having categorical data and you are applying the numerical analysis onto it then there is no point okay of using it so Whenever you visualize the data by using this kind of tools or math problem and see one, you get a better understanding of what is data is. Okay. So that then we can proceed further with our analysis, with our insight, and with our report, and then finally we go to storytelling. So everything lies on how you visualize the data. Okay, right? So that's a major point that we will be having whenever we need to go for uh, visualization by using Tableau. Okay. Next is storytelling. Tableau helps you to communicate the data insights in a clear and engaging way. That's two guys. Okay. So now what means like Tableau will be having a dashboard. Okay, it's one page and it will be having multiple pages after that. Okay, whenever you click on it, it will move to the next page and it will just have an interaction with all the pages. So whenever a data is like filtered in one page, it will be replicated to all other page. Like that very engaging things it can do so that the only focus on us is to explain whatever things that you have found to the client. Okay, so only thing that as a human you need is how to explain the data to the client. That's it because you are going to have a visualization by using Tableau. It will be very, very nice. I'm just explaining. So if time permits, guys, please look into the uh, Tableau official website. It is a free software. You can do, uh, you can download the Tableau desktop and then you just go and play. That will be only drag and drop, guys. You can load any kind of data set that you need. It can be a CSV file, Excel file. Um, you can load anything. And you can also integrate with different databases, SQL database, uh, Amazon database, Microsoft, like those things. Any databases you can integrate. Wherever you are having data, you just need to import it to the Tableau software and then you just go for the uh, interactive uh, visualizations and then create the dashboards out of it. Yeah. So that's it from my side. Yes. Yeah, sir. Over to you. Yes. So Tableau and data visualization, they go hand in hand, guys. Okay. So Tableau is actually uh, for data visualization. You can see graphics. So we can create cool graphics, interactive and uh, we can tell stories through 
with data visualization. So Tableau allows you to create interactive dashboards which tell the compelling data stories. Okay, this is very important. Then Tableau, um, you can use it to data exploration. You can discover the patterns in creating visualizations. And then data, you can tell stories through Tableau. Okay, communicate data insights in a clear and engaging manner so that even a person who doesn't know who is not from data science or AI ML, he he should be able to understand even if somebody is like you need to understand you need to apply the Flyman technique here so you need to uh, whatever data hi-fi jargons everything you have so uh, are you will you be able to convey and make understand a child okay uh, through storytelling okay can you communicate that uh, hi-fi research and all the big things to a child can, simply can you explain it to a child if you do that you are a great data scientist because that is what tableau will do even child can understand oh these are different colors these are bars so same way a person who is not even educated you need to think in your mind that you have to make the that person understand 100 percent whatever insights you want to communicate so have that in your mind then uh, create uh, all these visualizations and um, insights and communicate it that way okay so that should be the baseline and then your ultimately when you have that baseline you will be successful delivering your insights and uh, communicating your insights to the stakeholders Thank you. Yeah, actually, sir, that's a great point. Okay, whenever you are able to convey the data to a child, right, then that's the success of us. Okay, so yeah, moving on to the next slide. Let's see what we are having next. Yeah, Hadoop and big data processing, guys. Uh, like as I'm explaining, right. So I think we're gonna have a, a very bigger data. Okay, whenever we are having. I'm just saying in a real time, we're gonna have not gonna have a hundred records or two hundred records, it's gonna be lakhs and plus data. So we should have some techniques to store this data. So one of the techniques is Hadoop. So it's a very, very like um, older technique, but it's a way of storing data in a distributed manner, not like in a single uh, computer or a single system, it will be in a distributed manner so that whenever we read a, a need a record, we can able to fetch the record from different system so that it will handle the computation. Okay, that's a major reason. So Hadoop and big data processing, first is data storage. So Hadoop's distributed file system allows you to store large volume of data across multiple nodes. It is like a graph, okay. What happens means, instead of storing all the data, consider we are having 100 GB of data, instead of storing it in a single device, we can store 10 GB of data in each of 10 devices. So what happens means now, you get an idea of uh, how to uh, get the data, okay. You will be computing very, uh, very less and also, there is a less possibility of crashing the system. Okay. I have said, right, I will, I will crash the system because like whenever I'm just requesting, it is just fetching all the data from the server due to which the server crashes. Then I have found a way of parallel processing so that I'm getting a data from chunk ways. Okay. Like that you can do in the Hadoop. Hadoop has that feature. Next is pre-processing. Hadoop has a MapReduce program, which is a framework that enables you to do the parallel processing for massive uh, data sets. Okay. So it has a MapReduce program that, where it will do the mapping kind of thing for the data and then it will reduce and it will return the answer so that's a major thing so it's like a parallel processing which is very very uh, interesting and very helpful whenever you have a large volume of data okay so that you can have a your database very safe okay next is scalability so hadoop is designed to handle massive amount of data effectively so guys one thing um today we are saying like terabyte i think so it's, it's a it's a byte i know <laughs> so there are more than that Today it's the it's a maximum bytes we are having. Do you guys think it will be like that only? No, right? It's gonna change over time. Okay. Um, every day we are creating like millions and trillions of data. What happens means it is gonna increase every day. Okay. So that's the reason I'm just saying that uh, this kind of database that you are using, right? It should be scalable, scalable enough. Okay. You it should be able to scale the things. Whenever you, you are going to have more data, it should be adaptable to this uh, this uh, this system itself. Okay. So it should be scalable. So this all the features are available in this Hadoop. Okay. But it is an older version, but like it is very, very important thing. Okay. 
So guys, this is a way of how to store and data in a bigger database. Okay. So yeah, that's it for me, sir. Yeah, so over to you. Yes. So Hadoop and big data processing. Hadoop is used for big data guys. So when you have billions of data sets in your data, so you have to do, you have to store it somewhere, right? So this is the best uh, tool where you can store it. You can do data processing, you can do scalability and you can distribute files. Um, it will help you uh, distributing easily large files, okay, across uh, multiple nodes. So Hadoop, again, uh, data processing, it will help you to enable parallel processing, massive data sets. So it's built on that. You can see elephant. Elephant is big. Huh? So you can Im Im uh, imagine when they, the designers would have designed it. So they say other others are like small animals. Hadoop is big. It's a very giant. Huh? So so you can see, you can imagine from the picture. Huh? This is called data visualization. Huh? It's, it's called visually making people understand this is big. Huh? Hadoop. Okay. So uh, scalability, Hadoop is designed to handle massive data, um, amount of data efficiently because the architect is designed for big data, huge amount of data. So that is why it is uh, very, very powerful for big data. Uh, okay, there are other tools also, but it is also it is one of the powerful tools in for big data. So we'll be learning it in the in the course of time so how will uh, the deeper and meta level so keep learning yeah actually sir has now explained a, 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 a thing in a very interesting manner right there is a symbolic representation elephant so it's a big kind of database that that's great sir okay so yeah guys so this is how the visualization should be okay we are just speaking visualization visualization so this is a visual treat Okay, so the visualization should be in a manner that it will be very easy and understandable by a simple person. Okay, so I think we can go, move on to the next slide. Okay, yeah. So deep uh, machine learning and deep learning uh, frameworks. Okay, machine learning algorithms enables uh, computers to learn from data and make predictions. Okay, so it's a simple thing. We have already learned about it. So machine learning is something like uh, which makes uh, the computers to learn data and make prediction okay that will be algorithm machine learning is like consider it is an algorithm consider y is equal to mx plus c it is a kind of machine learning algorithm it is a linear regression algorithm we will feed the data and the machine gonna learn based on the learning it gonna do the prediction okay so we need to find the slope and intercept so that whenever the x is given the y is predicted like that the machine learning will be whereas deep learning is an algorithm which uses artificial neural network to learn some complex pattern so whenever the data is not fixed to a single equation, then we can call it as we need to move for the deep learning process. Whenever you are having image data that we need to go for pixel wise uh, learning. So what happens means we need to learn each and every pixel. That time what happens means you need to have a complex pattern. Okay. In order to handle that, you need to go for something called as deep learning kind of thing. Okay. Next, that is a frameworks. Frameworks like scikit-learn, which is very helpful for a machine learning problem. And we are having TensorFlow and PyTorch, which is very, very helpful for uh, deep learning problems. So, uh, guys, this is what I'm just explaining. Uh, like last week, I have just have a problem with this PyTorch. Okay. It's a Torch library. So it is not, I'm, it is a GPU maintaining library. What happens means the GPU kit vanished uh, for, for my task. So that's the reason I've just used a community to fix it. Okay. Uh, so that that's what uh, one or more library. And then these tools provides building and deploying machine learning models and then deep learning models like those. Okay. So these are the different frameworks that we are having for machine learning and deep learning. Yes, sir. Over to you. Yes. So machine learning is what? Machines learn from data. And if you have deep understanding of data, data science, you are data scientist, you will build better models with machine learning. Machine learning is nothing. I'll give just example, guys, holistic example. AI is what? AI is end to end. From AI from the beginning, from hundreds of years, AI has been used in different forms. Uh, okay. And uh, then you have AI, till now you use LLMs, deep learning, generative AI. So this is holistically called AI. Okay. Umbrella. 
under umbrella there are different things first is data science so you need to learn that properly and then machine learning then deep learning then generative ai so so now we are getting familiar with the machine learning machine learning ai is what ai i'll just define ai is mimicking the uh, human intelligence and the environment it, it depends like if it it depends like if you are building a robot which cleans your house so it will mim uh, there would be a human intelligence also it will mim it will also learn from the environment where it has to perform the function objective function where it needs to solve that specific cleaning the dirt on the floor and stuff right similarly machine learning is nothing just learning from data deep learning is again learning from data but deeply generative ai is which generates the new text new features from the existing data like new uh, creative new creation of new text new um, newness from the old existing data okay so in simple terms i am explaining so machine learning algorithms enable compare to learn data and make predictions this is a simple like machine learning is just it learns from the data and makes predictions that's it so how clean is your data how pre processing you have done it will determine on that how good is your data is it biased non biased is it primary research is it secondary all those factors uh, eda pre processing cleaning everything matters huh? okay then deep learning is we use different algorithms uh, like artificial neural networks neural networks is again we have neurons so they the scientists have copied the pattern of our neurons not exactly but um, they have copied they are inspired from neurons that's why they have called it neural network so neurons is from human brain has neurons billions of neurons that's that's this is how we function and we are intelligent we can create similarly deep learning uses neural networks and uh, learning from the complex data okay uh, patterns and stuff okay then we have frameworks frameworks are like scikit learn we use tensorflow Py pytorch provides tools for building deep machine learning models okay so these there are different frameworks scikit learn is a framework somebody if somebody asks you what is framework so scikit learn is a framework tensorflow is a frameworks right uh, pytorch is a framework huh? so in terms of ai ml language or data science language so keep learning deeply from a meta level absorb the information digest the information and apply the information thank you yeah guys so that's the thing okay yeah so conclusion and key key, key takeaways okay so what this mean by that so mastering these tools and software is crucial for success in data science continue to learn as sir is saying and stay updated with the latest advancement in this field so guys the one thing everything matters right time is a matter of thing okay uh, we can uh, money we can say it's a matter but like time is a matter so whenever you are saying uh, time is a matter when related to our field we need to use as much tool and techniques that we are having so that making everything easier everything flexible everything you know first first attempt we, we make a success okay the thing is you need to make use of all the tools that we are that are available and make the things very easier so that uh, the first time you are doing right it will be done completely okay so it will be less time uh, okay now the now the field is like it is growing okay so you should be in a manner that you are able to uh, grow with the field so you need to solve the problem in very less and stupendous stupend time so that uh, given time like the thing is you need to use different tools then only you can manage these things okay so yeah that's that's a key takeaway uh, for this session guys so try to use lots of tools and techniques which are related to data science and make your thing very easier and life very easier okay yes sir over to you yes so conclusion and key takeaways from this session guys mastering the tools and softwares is crucial and success
for success with the data science and in as a data scientist or a AI ML researcher or a scientist or a computer today's times you need to master these softwares and tools Con and continue learn explore new things stay updated uh, okay and uh, for the latest advancements what is happening and keep learning lifelong learner that mindset you have to build now getting degree btech masters phd is that time is gone guys you have to be new every day you have to learn every day and it's a continuous thing you have to continuously evolve now it is a lifelong learning thing it's not degrees and phds even you have 100 of phds that is not going to help you continuous improvement in your skills in your in the field continuous research publish papers uh, and be relevant build your startups become entrepreneur try 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 and um, you'll be always learning okay so continuous learning is the only thing in today's times guys there is degrees all these things now they don't matter okay they're just paper piece of paper so continue the, you need to have fire deep fire till we are live we need to continuously learn and upgrade our skills thank you so much uh, keep learning go and watch all the sessions deeply five to ten times do reinforce learning uh, learn absorb the information digest the information apply the information write in the comment section how you're going to apply this information all these uh, skills and tools and concepts and everything and uh, do all the assignments and keep learning subscribe to our channels thank you yeah guys thank you we will meet in the next session bye